In December 2025, it was announced that the Russian airline UVT Aero expects opportunities to modernize its inventory by acquiring five Superjet SJ-100 aircraft from the new import substituted series and nine IL-114-300 aircraft. This information is significant because this carrier from Tatarstan was anticipated to be the first customer of the new serial 2214 aircraft, which were intended to be manufactured by the Kazan aircraft plant. According to the local publication Business Online, UVT Aero no longer expects to acquire the previously planned 2214 aircraft in the foreseeable future. The Kazan aircraft plant has been unable to start the necessary serial production of the 2214, which the enterprise had committed to establishing between the year 2022 and the year 2024. Meanwhile, the airline, located in close proximity to the plant, could have provided an ideal platform for the deployment of the new series 2214 into civilian aviation operations. As local journalists observe, during the second half of the year 2022, as the Russian leadership was deliberating on whether to resume serial production of the airliner, Rustam Minikhanov, the head of Tatarstan, stated that the Republic would place an order for four aircraft for UVT Aero in order to influence the decision in favor of restarting production. Credit must be given to the carrier. UVT Aero was diligently preparing for and anticipating its new aircraft. The airline started putting together flight personnel and requalified six pilots through simulator training. Flight training was slated to commence in the spring of the year 2025. The initial delivery plans were notably practical. The corporation was scheduled to acquire two 2214 aircraft in October of the year 2024, with an additional two expected in September of the year 2025. If the aircraft were effectively deployed into service, the airline intended to procure an additional 62214 aircraft. However, the beginning of 2214 production in Kazan did not proceed as originally planned. Russia has previously addressed this matter in detail. In fact, only a single new 2214 has been produced to date, with its inaugural flight occurring at the end of the year, 2024. A second aircraft is anticipated to join it by the end of the year, 2025, most likely shortly before the new year. UVT Aero will not acquire either of these aircraft despite presently operating a fleet of aging foreign-produced Bombardier CRJ-200 aircraft. What is particularly notable is that the first new 2214 was sold by the manufacturer in a corporate jet configuration to the Russian firm SOGAZ. For those unfamiliar with the context, UVT Aero is not a poor regional airline, but functions as an integral division of the major oil corporation, Tatneft. When the Kazan aircraft plant was unable to deliver the promised 2214 aircraft within the stipulated time frame, its representatives were required to appear in court, specifically before Tatneft itself. In July of the year, 2025, the court mandated that the aircraft manufacturer pay 6.2 billion rubles to the company. In the autumn of the year 2025, a second legal action was filed, amounting to 11.7 billion rubles. All of this appears especially bleak in light of the tangible developments achieved in the certification testing programs of the MC-21, as well as comparable initiatives for the Superjet and the IL-114-300, which have been making significant progress. Incidentally, these programs were also recently addressed by us. In this context, the decision by UVT Aero Management to conduct a thorough review of the new Superjets and the IL-114-300 seems wholly justified. Even if the Kazan aircraft plant ultimately succeeds in manufacturing 2 to 3 2 2 one, four aircraft annually, the airline would not attain a priority position in the queue before the years 2029 to 2030. Regional carriers have experienced delays owing to significant political considerations. The plant's initial plan is to deliver aircraft to the Special Flight Detachment, Rossiya, 
which serves the nation's highest officials in order to demonstrate to senior authorities that operations are progressing satisfactorily. Certainly, the TU-214 could conceivably be substituted by the MC-21. However, during the initial years of serial production, the MC-21 is expected to serve predominantly as the main aircraft for Aeroflot. Consequently, companies such as UVT Aero would also face a prolonged wait for deliveries. Conversely, the example of the Tatarstan-based carrier plainly demonstrates that Russian civil aviation extends beyond the Kazan aircraft plant alone. Airlines will operate new superjets equipped with Russian PD-8 engines and IL-114-300 aircraft propelled by TV-7117 ST-01 engines. Based on the tone of coverage in local media, this outcome has not been favorably received. But such things happen. The most important thing is not to think in narrow local categories reminiscent of the neo-feudal fragmentation of the 1990s when everyone acted independently within their own territory, a period that nearly cost the country its civil aviation industry. UVT Aero has presumably chosen to discontinue the acquisition of the TU-214 and is now anticipating the delivery of the IL-114-300 and the SJ-100. According to a report by Inkazan, the carrier has been compelled to amend its plans due to postponed timelines and issues with the fleet. The airline no longer regards the 2214 as a viable short-term solution for fleet renewal. In addition to its fleet of seven Bombardier CRJ-200 aircraft, the carrier intends to procure NIL-114-300 aircraft with a subsequent acquisition of five SJ-100 aircraft. This information was verified by Petr Trubeyev, the chief executive officer of UVT Aero. Previously, the company had already explored options for the first aircraft. Notably, the airline headquartered in Bogoma appears to be reverting to its origins. UVT initially commenced operations with twin-engine LI-2 and IL-14 aircraft. UVT intends to operate the IL-114 on short-haul routes. The aircraft will not be allocated to lengthier routes, such as Bogoma to Nizhnevartovsk. The SJ-100, on the other hand, is noteworthy due to certain routes necessitating larger aircraft with a capacity of up to 100 passengers. Today, the airline's CRJ-200 fleet is between 22 and 26 years old. Due to sanctions, ensuring their airworthiness has become progressively more challenging and costly. Experts contend that, in addition to the 2214, the company has also forfeited the opportunity to operate international routes. Until recently, UVT Aero expected to acquire the 2214. Since the year 2022, Russian authorities have consistently underscored the importance of resuming aircraft production in response to the worsening international political climate. The objectives were ambitious. The plan was to manufacture 20 aircraft annually beginning in the year 2027 and to produce more than 100 aircraft by the conclusion of the year 2030. By the year 2023, a lineup of airlines seeking to acquire new 2214 aircraft had materialized, comprising Aeroflot, Aurora, Yakusha, and several others. Simultaneously, Concerns arose regarding the possibility that the plant may not have adequate funding for aircraft manufacturing, leading to appeals for supplementary budget allocation. UVT Aero initiated the formation of flight personnel for the first two aircraft, which were scheduled for delivery in October of the year 2024, with an additional two aircraft planned for September of the year 2025. Nevertheless, the initial aircraft designated for UVT was reassigned to SOGAZ. By the autumn of the year 2024, it became evident that acquiring the subsequent aircraft would also be unfeasible. Consequently, Tatneft initiated legal proceedings against Tupolev for 5.6 billion rubles, subsequently filing an additional claim for 1.6 billion rubles due to breach of contractual obligations. The defendant aims to achieve a settlement, 
potentially committing to aircraft deliveries at a future date. However, the next 2214 is designated for the Ministry of Emergency Situations, and several subsequent aircraft are allocated to the Special Flight Detachment, Rossia. At most, UVT Aero is expected to reach the queue by the year 2029. Any timelines are provisional and subject to adjustment in either direction. The government has consistently indicated that the assembly issues originate from staffing shortages at the Kazan aircraft plant. Based on job listings, numerous vacancies continue to be available, although the overall count has decreased since winter. Another significant challenge is insufficient production capacity. Delivery schedules for the new 2214 aircraft have been repeatedly delayed due to postponed technical modernization, inconsistent procurement of materials and components, and disruptions in the supply chain. Consequently, management transitions took place within Tupolev and the Kazan aircraft plant. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.